I would say five or six years, because five or six years ago, we couldn't even make these models on, on a desktop computer. Now we can. And let's, yeah, let's move over back this way so we can glimpse. OK, so why don't you stop there, I'd say, and go forward now along this route. The thing that really strikes me, it almost breaks down, but what we can see here is something you can really appreciate, again, by visualization. I hope that you'll go away from uh, this little meeting today knowing something about the Roman Forum, its history, its major monuments, what it actually looked like. Those doors look good. Boy, that's amazing. Uh, Lynn Lancaster has an idea, apparently, of one uh, corridor. When we were looking at the Roman Forum model, the exciting thing, the moving thing, it almost brings tears to my eyes still, but I remember when I first was seeing these things a few years ago, it, it did bring tears to my eyes and eyes of other archaeologists, is to see the interaction of these different monuments and buildings with each other. The view from one to another, or as you're walking along the way, the views change. And then you can get into studies of the way in which monuments were cited with the views in mind, how they're aligned one with respect to another. What about circulation of people? In the case of a theater or an amphitheater like the Colosseum, the cliche of scholars for, for decades, for centuries, has been this was a good people mover. You could get from inside to outside with your little ticket in a few minutes. Well, we, we have some doubts about that. In the case of the Colosseum, Dean Abernathy noticed in making the model that Everybody in the cheap seats up above for the uh, commoners uh, were forced through a very narrow and dark corridor. And that had not really been noticed before. 